Hello everybody, do you like fruit? Do you like consuming fruit in winter? Do you too live on a pathetic, godless, rainy island that cannot grow anything exotic whatsoever? If so, we need to talk about this photograph, because it's a day ending in Y, so somebody has to get angry on the internet again about one of five pictures. The implication of this image is that dumb idiot Argentinian pear plantation owners spend hard-earned valuable Argentinian money to ship freshly picked pears all the way to Thailand to be packaged into these gross single-use plastic containers before again being shipped to, presumably, the United States. A near complete navigation of the entire planet on massive container ships burning fuel and money. For some fruit? What's that all about? Long story short, it's this thing called comparative advantage, but the Wikipedia page for that is really dense and covered in equations and has only four pictures and three of them are graphs, so I'm not going to read any of that. Let's take a look at the supply chain of pears and figure out at what point exactly it becomes cheaper to do all of this than supposedly the easy way of just growing the pears in the USA and packing them somewhere in the USA. Like, Eoa. And I promise you, I'll, I'll try and make it funny. I know it sounds really boring, I should know. I just spent several days reading about the f***ing pear industry. No, 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 wait, don't, don't click off, please, no, no, no. Part one, growing a pear. Okay, some of the clever clogs among us may have already figured out that in most places across the world, you can grow your own pears in your backyard even in Sweden, where the average temperature is minus a billion. But anyone with a fruit tree in their garden, or anyone who learned about seasons in preschool, will know that the tree doesn't always make fruit all of the time. Usually for a few weeks in summer, it makes a lot, and then it dies off again. Pro. Some weeks a year, you get free fruit. Yay! Con. You have to eat like a hundred pears in the span of a week or they'll all go rotten and make your house smell worse than a university dormitory kitchen. Take the f***ing bins out, Jessica. For the other 351 days per year, if you want a nice pear and sausage smoothie, you need to buy your pears from elsewhere. Perhaps a hot country where seasons barely exist and fruit grows on trees all year round, like Argentina, for example. But the United States of America also grows pears, more than Argentina in fact. Why must the pears in this picture come from Argentina and not be homegrown, red-blooded, freedom-loving American pears, God damn it! Because while the United States produces pears, it also produces a lot of other things. Argentina is still primarily an agricultural economy, and so naturally their government policy is geared towards specialising in farming and food transportation, making their pear quality better and producing more of them faster, even if they don't produce as much as Americans. In the real world, it's kind of like getting your hair cut by your mum or by a professional barber. Your mum does loads of stuff, of which cutting your hair is a part. The barber does nothing but hair cutting. Ain't it just easier to get your hair cut by a guy who does it every day instead of someone who only does it once every couple months? Is it worth the time and money for your mum to improve her skills in hairdressing when you're the only person who needs her services and only once every couple of months? No. Same principle with the fruit. The USA does not, or should not, give any more time and money towards fostering the pear industry, because it has more important things to focus on, like iPhones, or $1,000 cup holders. They may produce more pears, but they aren't as efficiently made or as high a quality as Argentinian pears, because Argentines spend all of their resources towards their agricultural economy. If you're a supermarket and you want to get the upper hand over competitors, are you going to order the okay quality, reasonably cheap American pears, or the high quality, very cheap to grow Argentine pears? Yeah, that's what I thought. And that's why it's better to ship fruit from across the ocean rather than growing them at home. But that doesn't explain why they have to go all the way to f***ing Thailand to be packaged. Part 2. Thailand in packaged, they are why? Good question. 
At face value, it looks like you should really just pack these in Argentina and go straight to North America, rather than all the way across the ocean to Thailand. Why the middle map? It's at this point that we should probably take a look at what this product in the picture actually is. From a different angle, we can see that they are pears, yes, but chopped pears in a lemon-flavoured syrup. Fruit in syrup products are popular in Southeast Asia because they don't require refrigeration and more importantly can be used to make ruyak, a Southeast Asian fruit salad eaten mostly in Malaysia and Indonesia. Having easy access to preserved fruits that don't require refrigeration is crucial to developing countries like Indonesia. The packing facility in Thailand is close to people who want packed fruits, as well as other pear producing countries like China and India. Again though, why not pack in Argentina and ship them directly to Indonesia? Because pears are picked roughly one or two weeks before they are ripe and then continue the ripening process off the branch in refrigeration. Coincidentally, about the time a container ship needs to get from South America to Southeast Asia. If you packed in Argentina, you'd have to wait a week or more for the pears to ripe, then make the 21 day trip to Indonesia. This would extend production time considerably, and that's just a waste of time. Meanwhile, the inside of a dark metal shipping container is naturally cold. That's free ripening that can be done on the trip there, instead of paying millions for a high-tech massive pear cooling facility in Buenos Aires. So how did these pears end up in North America? The majority of Americans don't usually eat ruyak and have refrigerators to store their fresh fruit. But there's still a demand, however small, for these packed pears. So to provide for this demographic, American supermarkets have two options. You could build a packing plant in the USA, take some American pears and pack them yourself. But because fewer people want the product, the production process would require fewer people to operate, which is not only less efficient and paradoxically increases the cost, but also produces more carbon dioxide per calorie processed. And believe me, big fruit companies aren't going to be paying people to sit around doing nothing. These are the people who overthrew Latin American governments for 2% higher profits. Or you could just buy from the factory in Thailand, which is better for your finances and overall efficiency. Seriously though, is it really that cheap to ship things? Yes. Pears are 178 grams, and each shipping container can hold up to 24,000 kilograms. That's 135,000 pears. Shipping one container from Asia to North America costs about $2,500, or 1.8 cents per pair. And that's how it costs mere pennies for companies to lug vast amounts of food across the world, and how exotic fruit ends up on your dining table at any time of the year. Maybe you don't have a problem with that. Unless you're under the age of 12, we all like fruit. And there's nothing wrong with getting things from abroad that you can't get in your own country. But maybe your contention is different. Perhaps you don't like this supply chain, because it is bad for the environment. Part 3. Environment for the bad that shipping really is? Obviously, as massive coal and diesel burning machines, cargo ships produce a lot of greenhouse gases that are bad for the environment. The industry is trying to improve, somewhat, by slowing down slightly so that they burn less fuel, and ideas have been floated, no pun intended, for nuclear or electric cargo ships. But don't expect those ideas to take off. I mean, come on. Surprisingly though, despite shipping being nearly 80% of all international transport, it only makes up 37% of transport's carbon emissions. The king of pollution goes to road transport, which is crazily inefficient. Trucks and lorries are less than 10% of all international transport, and they make up over half of emissions? What the f***? If you're interested as to why this is the case, I've put a little supplementary video on my second channel where I explain the maths behind it. Go ahead and look at it if you want. Ferrying pairs halfway across the earth really is less carbon intensive than driving it in a truck to a packing plant in your own country. 
all of international shipping with over 5,000 container ships with a combined storage capacity of 714,000 cubic kilometers is responsible for 2.5% of global emissions. You know what? I don't think that's the biggest priority on the list of things that need decarbonizing. I think we can leave that for a bit. So until we invent a TARDIS or a bridge across the Atlantic Ocean, shipping is the best option. Especially since only a tiny amount of a food's carbon footprint is in transportation to begin with. The rest comes from the farming process, and that's where we need to focus on cutting emissions. This is why large Argentinian farms are better than many smaller American farms. Larger farms can afford to invest in green technology and reduce their carbon footprint. And statistically, they do. So if you like buying things and you want to help out the economy of a developing nation while being the least environmentally damaging, be sure to buy foreign. This weird pack of pears may seem horribly inefficient, but it really is the best way to get the food you want into your mouth.